How big can they get? The RTX 3080 and 3090 has now dropped. And we are not only here to build a water-cooled PC with them, but we'll also be benchmarking these two beasts of a GPU against many other GPUs to see how they compare. And of course, at the end, we'll give you our final thoughts on these two GPUs. I hope you all enjoy the build. <laughs>
So here it is, the MSI RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio. So with the launch of the 3080, consumers were able to get amazing performance for a great price to performance ratio. The best we've seen in years, well, that is if you were able to get your hands on one. But now we have the RTX 3090 coming in at $1,499. I'm fairly interested in seeing how it compares against the $699 RTX 3080, especially in rendering and encoding, which is where this GPU should shine with its 24 gigs of VRAM. We have a lot of slides to get through, so feel free to pause here and there if you want to take a look at any particular game. So sit back, relax, and I'll give my final thoughts at the end. Hope you all enjoy. Now you may have noticed that our slides did not include 1080p with ray tracing and DLSS turned on. DLSS is a deep learning feature which frees up graphics card resources for additional rendering, which will get you more frames and detail. Great for when ray tracing is in play. You may remember about everyone complaining about ray tracing during the launch of the 2000 series graphics cards and how significant the drop in frame rate was when ray tracing was enabled. DLSS will try and help bring some of that frame rate back, but with the resolution scaling occurring, it's not really worth it at 1080p. So a lot of games have chose to not support 1080p DLSS at all. 
And so that's why we've decided to not include 1080p DLSS with RT turned on. While we are at the topic of DLSS, we loaded up control to see the difference in FPS DLSS 2.0 made with ray tracing enabled. At 4K with ray tracing, we saw a 60% improvement in FPS while enabling DLSS 2.0 for the RTX 3080. And we saw the exact same increase with the RTX 3090, starting at 42 FPS and jumping up to 100 5 FPS. Keeping in mind this is with a 1080p rendering resolution. Our 1080p results had both the 3080 and the 3090 heavily bottlenecked by the CPU. This put the 3080 anywhere from 4 to 16% faster than the 2080 Ti. And the 3090 was roughly 0 to 10% faster than the 3080. Now I'm sure with future CPU releases that are able to handle these graphics cards, we'll see a better improvement, especially at those lower resolutions. The real place where these two GPUs shine is at 4K. We saw a 20 to 30% increase in performance from the 2080 Ti for the 3080. And there was a further 10 to 15% increase from the 3080 to the 3090 in gaming. We did end up doing a lot of game tests with the RTX 3090 because Nvidia marketed it as a gaming GPU. I believe Nvidia should have put the focus more towards a workload GPU and that it be compared against the previous Titan RTX cards because both of them had similar amounts of VRAM. We did end up testing the GPUs in Adobe rendering. However, the results were fairly similar because Adobe rendering is very CPU intensive, even with CUDA enabled. So we're getting fairly similar results. We saw massive improvements, however, in Blender. The RTX 3080 ended up scoring 40 to 52% faster scores than the 2080 Ti. The 3090 beat out the 3080 by 15%. Now, while the RTX 3080 is half the price of the RTX 3090, the RTX 3090 does have its place as a workstation GPU. I would consider this option before you start looking at the Quadro cards, which is where costs really go up. It does have its place on the market, but its marketing should have been more focused on workloads rather than gaming. As a gaming card, the RTX 3080 is definitely the one to get. For productivity, the 3080 still does a really good job, but if you wanna get yourself a cheaper workstation GPU, then the 3090 is there for you. One last note that I wanted to leave you guys with, we tested both the 3080 and the 3090 in a one hour Fermark stress test. The 3080 peaked at 71 degrees and 350 watts. The 3090 ended up peaking at 76 degrees and pulled a massive 388 watts. Before we go, I'd just like to give a big shout out to my good friend Omar and Power On Gaming. Our RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio was delayed from MSI. We're actually meant to have this system out for the launch release of the 3090. However, we didn't get our GPU in time. And our GPU was meant to arrive mid this week, but it hasn't arrived yet either. So big thank you to those guys who actually had that particular GPU on hand so we're able to get this video out. It is very frustrating not being able to put out content when people really need it at that time to decide whether or not they wanna make these purchases. Obviously there's lots of other videos but I know some people were looking forward to our take on these GPUs as well and of course to see a build with them. But we also do understand the stresses that these companies do go through, especially when there's a new product launch and there isn't a lot available for the users. So I hope you did enjoy what we did provide today. Uh, one last note is we did do all of these benchmarks after the patching happened with the new drivers from NVIDIA. So these are up-to-date numbers for you guys. Now, if you'd like to know all of the specs in more detail, I'll leave those in the description. This is the brand new Thermaltake Core P8 with lots of RGB bling inside. You may have noticed we also have the new Thermaltake W7 water block on the CPU, which is awesome. I don't even know if these have been released yet, but um, we got those in there, some Thermaltake RAM, uh, the distro plate, I love that thing. And we ended up going with clear liquid this time. Anyway guys, as I said, specs will be in the description. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to leave a like, consider subscribing, check out more videos on the channel. Lots of custom PCs, a few reviews, some modding tutorials, we've got much more. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, it's greatly appreciated over on Patreon. Uh, links in the description. Or you can become a YouTube channel member. We appreciate you guys, and we'll see you all in the next one.